Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about the field upgrades available in Battlefield 4. Now, field upgrades allow you to customize your class beyond just weapon attachments. There are three universal field upgrades that any class can equip. Those are Defensive, Offensive, and Shadow. Then there are two specific field upgrades for each class, so no matter what, you will always have five options to pick from. Each field upgrade has four levels of progression. The first level is always unlocked by default. To unlock the other three levels, you have to complete squad-based objectives or tasks, such as reviving squad mates, dispensing ammo to squad mates, or repairing a vehicle that a squad mate occupies. Now, as long as your squad sticks together and is alive the whole time, you will actually continue to progress through the levels one after another until you max out all of your field upgrades. The problem is, if your entire squad gets wiped out, you're all killed, you will lose your progress on that bar. I believe you use lose one field upgrade progression if your squad wipes. So this really does give you a huge amount of incentive to work together as a team, stay alive, revive each other, and if you're the last person in a squad, then go find somewhere to hide so that you don't lose your progress. So those are the basics, and I know what you guys are all waiting for now. You want to know the specifics. What are each of these field upgrades capable of? What are the levels? What do they do? Well, here you go. I've got all of them listed out for you. First up, we have the Universal Defensive Field Upgrade. This is going to be a very popular one. Level 1 that everybody has unlocked by default reduces incoming damage to the chest by 10%. It's a pretty darn good field upgrade. Level 2 is cover, decreases the amount of incoming suppression. Level 3 is flak, decreases the damage from explosives by 15%. Level 4 is quick regen, decreases the time before out of combat heal by 20%. So you're going to start regening your health a bit quicker with this final level. The next universal field upgrade is offensive. Level 1 is sprint, increasing your maximum sprint speed by 10%. Level 2 is ammo, increases maximum uh, inventory of bullets by 50%. Level 3 grenades increase maximum inventory of hand grenades by 1. Level 4 is reduced fall. Increase height you can fall without damage. Personally, I think this reduced fall field upgrade is quite boring and not that exciting. I think it would be cooler if they gave offensive level 4 something like 10% faster reload speeds or something just to give them uh, a tiny little edge in those intense combat situations. The final universal field upgrade is called Shadow. Level 1 gives you reduced time you are spotted by 2 seconds. Level 2 is Sprint, again increasing your maximum sprint speed by 10%. Level 3, Reduced Fall, we already talked about that. Level 4 is Stealth. This allows you to be undetected by motion sensors except when you're sprinting. I love the idea of having a universal field upgrade that allows any class to be less detectable. I'm just not really crazy about the progression here. It doesn't really wow me or entice me. I feel like this is going to be a pretty unpopular one for many people to choose. If I had my way, I would rearrange it so that level 1 was sprint. Everybody starts off faster. Level 2 is stealth, so you don't have to worry about motion sensors as much at the second level. Level 3 is quick unspot, reducing your uh, time that you're spotted by enemies. And then I was thinking, you know, level 4 could be something new. Maybe reduced thermal signature, so you don't show up on thermal sites or vehicle thermal uh, sites quite as much. I think that would be a cool addition. And overall, just make the shadow a much more enticing field upgrade to pick. Now we have the specific field upgrades for each class. The first one for the assault class is called Combat Medic. Level 1 med kit upgrade. Increase the maximum deployed med bags and packs by 1. Level 2 is Sprint. Level 3 is Defib upgrade. Increases the charge up speed of defibrillators by 100%. I'm not sure if this reduces the time it takes in between individual defibrillator revives or if it means you can charge them faster so that you can get that 100% health restore revive quicker than you could before. Level 4 is medical unit. Occupied vehicles will slowly heal nearby soldiers. This is a very cool upgrade. Uh, it does make me a little bit concerned if it heals the soldiers inside of the same vehicle with you. We don't want to recreate that scene in Battlefield 2 where you could have a medic in a helicopter and he would just heal all the soldiers uh, and then you had repairs and all of a sudden you had these transport helicopters that were just basically these invincible flying units. 
The other assault specific field upgrade is Grenadier. Level one is grenades, increases maximum inventory of hand grenades by one. Level two is sprint. Level three is 40 millimeter grenades, increases maximum inventory of 40 millimeter grenades by three. That's a pretty big increase. So if you like that grenade launcher, you're gonna have a lot more ammo for it. Level four is flak, decreases damage from explosions by 15%. Moving on to the engineer class, the first one we have is anti-tank. Level one increases, is called mines. It increases the maximum inventory of AT mines or M2 slam to six. Level two is rockets, increases the maximum inventory of AT and AA ammo to seven. Level three, more deployed explosives, increases the maximum deployed explosives to six. This means tons of mines on the ground. Level four is flak, again, reducing the damage you take from explosions by 15%. Personally, I would rearrange the heck out of this class. I think level one should be increased rockets, especially if you're getting spawn camped by a team with all your armor. You're going to want rockets. The tank drivers are not stupid enough to try and drive into your spawn and drive over mines. You need those extra rockets to take out armor. So that without a doubt should be level one. Level two should be flak because let's be honest, uh, if you're going up against tanks, they're going to be shooting at you with high explosive rounds. You want to survive those rounds as best as possible. Level three should then be increased mine capacity we don't need more deployed mines you know four mines or whatever it was you could deploy before seems like plenty to me level four i think you should do something like again reduce thermal signature because vehicles using that thermal camera are going to be able to pick up soldiers very easily a good anti-tank or anti-armor soldier being able to be a little bit more stealth from a vehicle could be a very very good level four upgrade then we have the mechanic field upgrade. Any tank drivers out there, this is going to be the field upgrade for you. Level one is fast repair, increases speed and sabotage of repairs by 35%. Level two is flak, again, decreases your explosive damage taken. Level three is cover, decreases the amount of incoming suppression by 50%. Level four is repair unit. Occupied vehicles will slowly repair nearby vehicles. Uh, level four is a very, very risky thing to put into the game. We uh, run the risk of uh, recreating that stuff in Battlefield 2 where you have a couple tank drivers next to each other with the repair unit feature and all of a sudden they become so much more powerful by just driving next to each other. They auto repair. Uh, it's, it's a dangerous thing to do and I would just say be careful dice. One small modification I would make to this class is the level 3 cover seems kind of like a useless thing. Honestly, I don't really care about suppression if I'm the guy who's trying to repair a tank. I would much rather have something like sprint for level 3 just in case your tank driver takes off without you and you're trying to catch up with him, uh, trying to get behind him or staying behind a vehicle while it's moving while you're repairing. I think sprint would come in handy for that. All right, now we have the support classes specific upgrades. The first one is indirect fire. Level one is ammo bag upgrade increase, maximum deployed ammo boxes and packs by one. Level two is ammo, increases maximum inventory of bullets by 50%. Level three is indirect fire, increases maximum M224 and XM25 ammo. The M224 is the mortar. Uh, level four is resupply unit, occupied vehicles will slowly resupply nearby soldiers. The thing that really confuses me about this field upgrade is that level two is ammo. You're the support class. You have access to ammo boxes. So why would you make level two ammo? You're already going to have unlimited ammo. The only reason I can think they would give this to you is that if you want to run with something like a mortar and an XM25. But honestly, I think that sounds like a horrible loadout. I would change level two to something like flak, especially if you're a mortar unit, you're trying to take indirect fire, then you're going to want something to reduce the explosive of damage. The second support specific field upgrade is called perimeter defense. This is for all you bipod pros out there. Level one is ammo. Again, very confusing upgrade. Level two is suppression. Increases the amount of outgoing suppression by 50%. Very good for machine guns. Level three is claymores. Increases the maximum inventory of claymores to three. Level four is MP APS upgrade. Increases the time MP APS can deflect incoming explosives. This is that little utility that you can place on the ground and it will actually deflect incoming lock on rockets and stuff like that. Uh, it sounds like a really cool upgrade. Now I can see that this class is trying to be designed so that you use something like claymores and the MP APS instead of having an ammo box or something like that. Kind of a risky move and it also I feel like it sort of quarantines you into a very specific play style with this upgrade. Personally I would try and make suppression level one because that seems like a very important thing for perimeter defense. 
Um, ammo too. Ammo, I would say make that optional. I mean, honestly, level two, I think body armor might be a very good defensive thing to have. So maybe make level two body armor, level one suppression. I think this class would be a little bit more useful. Now we've got the recon classes field upgrades and we're starting off with spec ops, which I anticipate being one of the most popular classes in the game. Level 1 is Stealth, undetected by motion sensors except when sprinting. Level 2 is C4 Explosives, increase the maximum inventory of C4 Explosives to 6. Level 3 is Motion Sensors, increases the maximum inventory of motion sensors to 5. Increases the range of tugs and MAV by 40%, incredibly good upgrade. Level 4 is Quick Unspot, reduces the time you are spotted by 2 seconds. Now just imagine giving this class a really good carbine and all of a sudden you are an incredibly good anti-infantry class and anti-armor class. I just, this class is going to kick ass. I can't wait to play it. Finally, we have the sniper field upgrade. Level 1 is hold breath. Increases the time you can steady your scope by 100%. Very, very useful upgrade. Level 2 is cover, decreases the amount of incoming suppression by 50%. Level 3 is quick unspot, reduces the time you're spotted by 2 seconds. Level 4 is advanced spot, increases the time your targets are spotted by 45%. Now, I really love the idea of a field upgrade that really tailors towards the sniper class, allows you to just snipe long range and be more effective. I have a better upgrade though for level 4, advanced spot, who really cares about 45% longer spot times, not really that big of a deal. What if we replace that level 4 with something called kill flash, which took away the scope glint on any sniper rifle? This is something that I know all recons would rejoice in having, uh, the ability to just not be easily pinpointed across the map because of that stupid little scope glint. Snipers in real life have these things called kill flashes. They get rid of scope glint. It's a great thing. I think it would be very awesome to have that implemented in the field upgrades tree, and it's something I think DICE should strongly consider. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for the field upgrades video. That's all of them there. I would love to hear in the comments what you guys think about the field upgrades, any modifications or ideas you have to the field upgrades to make them a little bit more balanced. The game is still in an unfinished state, so now's the time to uh, drop your suggestions. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.